Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, I never, ever, ever thought I would have to do a video about solvent traps again. I'd always kind of been critical of solvent traps, but it looks like the ATF is dying of boredom and they're going to turn the heat back up on them. We got a new open letter to FFLs in relation to solvent traps. It has a lot of you concerned. So let's try to break the letter down. Let's try to understand what the ATF is saying here. And also let's try to figure out what this means to you. So today let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about ATF's new solvent trap trap. Okay, so like I said, I never thought I'd have to do another video about solvent traps, but here we are. ATF has a new open letter to FFLs regarding solvent traps and how many of them or components thereof may actually constitute suppressors and therefore anybody in possession of those could be in violation of the Gun Control Act, which of course makes you a felon. Now, we have done videos in the past about solvent traps and I had always suggested that this was a terrible idea not just because of the legality involved, but candidly, why would you buy a device manufactured in China that says it's a solvent trap, but also can double as a suppressor, attach it to the end of your firearm, let it rip one day and pray to God that it actually works. And if it doesn't, well, God help you or anyone standing near it. Now, I've always said that if you really want to get a suppressor, I highly recommend that, you know, you buy one from a reputable manufacturer, which has actually been designed and tested for that purpose. But many of you, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, decided to buy some of these solvent traps. And some of you, because I talked to a lot of you all around the country, actually had done some alterations to it. Well, now we have a new letter from the ATF, which is basically saying, hey, listen, all of these solvent traps standing alone and in some instances components thereof constitute suppressors. And if you're in possession of them, you're in violation of the Gun Control Act. You are a felon. Now, as usual, anytime the ATF sends out a letter to clarify something, what they ultimately do is they end up confusing us even more. So if you tuned into this video to try to get some clarity, I will do my very best. But remember, I'm only as good as the material I'm working with and the material came from the ATF. The ATF recently examined devices commonly marketed as solvent traps and has determined that some of them are firearm silencers as defined in the Gun Control Act and as defined in the National Firearms Act. Okay, so which some of those actually are? Well, there's a little bit more guidance as we dig a little deeper into the letter. It includes this information. The test for whether an item is a silencer is not the label a manufacturer or retailer applies. Rather, it is the way the statute written by Congress applies to the item. Both the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act regulate firearm silencers. The term is defined as any device for silencing, muffling, or diminishing the report of a portable firearm, including any combination of parts designed or redesigned and intended for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer or firearm muffler and any part intended only for use in such assembly or fabrication. And so what the ATF is saying is, hey, listen, the manufacturers can call this whatever they want and you can claim that you're using it for whatever you claim it is, but that doesn't matter because they're going to make their own determination. The letter specifically states, ATF must consider a device's objective design features, including the use of which part is capable as part of the inquiry into whether the device is a silencer. For example, holes or markings indicating where a hole should be drilled that allow the passage of a projectile are clear indicators that the device or component parts may be properly classified as firearm silencers because this allows the propellant gases to expand and cool. By contrast, a hole serves no purpose in collecting solvent or debris and is actually contrary to the purported use of a solvent trap. The presence of indexing marks to drill a hole is not a prerequisite to the classification as a firearm silencer. It merely is an example of such evidence. Now, again, you think you're getting some clarification and then they screw it all up at the end and say, well, that does not really an indication. It's just an example. But obviously, if you purchased any of these devices and they actually had the markings 
to actually drill this stuff out, then yeah, this is exactly the stuff that the ATF is talking about. And what makes this enforcement effort different than the force reset triggers and the wide open triggers is that there is an argument that the force reset trigger and the wide open trigger technology does not fall under the purview of the federal definition of a machine gun. As a matter of fact, we know it doesn't and there's plenty of courts that have already ruled that way. But these solvent traps or any parts or combination of parts thereof that can be used to assemble one, well, that's exactly how many of them are designed to work. Now, consider this too. If you're claiming this as a solvent trap, why then do you need a hole on the other end? It's not gonna trap any solvent at that point. And why do you need baffling on the inside? Other such characteristics may include baffles, spacers, ported inner sleeve or tube, expansion chamber, end caps, and dampening material depending on the particular design of the device. While increasing the effectiveness of a firearm silencer, these same objective design features offer no advantage in collecting or filtering cleaning solvent. Now, as some of you may recall, these things were all the rage a couple years ago, and yeah, your social media accounts were being inundated with marketing. ATF is abundantly aware of that, and they're saying, hey, listen, we do not care how this was marketed. We do not care how you believe you're gonna use this product. Instead, the ATF states, over the years, many companies involved in marketing such solvent traps have asserted that they are permitted to manufacture transfer or import these items because they are not yet complete and therefore do not qualify as firearm silencers under federal law. However, this assertion is incorrect because a component of a firearm silencer need not be fully functional before it is recognized as a part intended only for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer. Just as though you think you're beginning to get clarified, then the ATF in their usual ATF fashion goes completely out of their lane and says, well, actually, this probably means that we can regulate a lot of different things. Don't believe me? Well, this is what the ATF said in their letter. In fact, Congress explicitly chose to regulate a combination of parts intended for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer and any part intended only for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer. Accordingly, a silencer part intended only for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer is itself regulated as a firearm muffler or firearm silencer under both the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act. But the problem of course is, is how many different components could be used in assembling a suppressor that can also be used for many, many other innocuous purposes. And where then, ATF, does this end? Ultimately, the ATF gives you the following advice if you so happen to be in possession of one of these items. Current possessors of these purported solvent traps that are silencers are encouraged to contact ATF for further guidance on how they may divest possession. If you are uncertain whether the device you possess is a firearm silencer as defined by the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act, please contact your local ATF field office. You may consult the local ATF office's webpage for office contact information. Now, that is the ATF's advice. Let me give you my advice. Do not contact the ATF, okay? Let us remember that Operation Reticent Recall, which was this huge scavenger hunt, all around the country for wide open triggers, force reset triggers and solvent traps, now only is turned into a scavenger hunt for solvent traps because the court has enjoined the enforcement of the trigger portion. And that is the huge difference between how we define machine gun and how we define firearm suppressor here. Uh, this has a little bit more firm statutory footing, which means you're highly likely to see the ATF, in fact, turn up Operation Reticent Recall version 3.0 and go completely crazy over trying to enforce and round these items up. What do I suggest you do? Number one, probably should contact local counsel. If you do not know who to contact, you can contact Washington Gun Law. We'll get you put in touch with the right person. Number two, if you haven't received a letter from the ATF at this point, this is your property. You have every right in the world to do with it, whatever you want. It's probably junk anyways. You can cut it up. Better yet, you could cut it up and take a video of it cutting it up. And by the way, when you're done cutting it up, you can do away and throw away the remnants all you want because like I said, it's your property. It's no different than taking your TV off the wall and cutting it up. You can do it. It's not a real wise use of resources, but yeah, you can do that. Now, if you're being contacted by ATF, either in person or through a letter or a phone call, 
you absolutely positively need to contact local council right away. Do not communicate with ATF until you've had an opportunity to talk to local council. Now, I've done that on many occasions, and oftentimes we do, in fact, end up communicating with ATF, but let your lawyer determine whether or not that is appropriate. Listen, we'll go ahead and link up ATF's letter. If you guys can make sense of it, hey, help me out here. In the meantime, if you've got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is also right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everyone remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.